Hello and welcome to the Image Occlusion Enhanced Tutorial Series for Anki. I am the author of the Image Occlusion Enhanced add-on and in the following videos I will try to guide you through its installation, its use and its customization. But first I want to give you a quick overview of what Image Occlusion Enhanced is all about and how it can help you in your own studies. Now, If you're watching this video, chances are you're already familiar with Anki. But for those of you who aren't, Anki is a space repetition flashcard app, which means that Instead of using a set of rigid intervals for adjusting the number of reviews of your cards, it uses an advanced algorithm which tries to adapt to your own ability to recall each item. Which means that flashcards that you find simpler or easier will appear less frequently and the ones that you mark as difficult will appear more often. So that way you always only have to perform the number of reviews that are actually necessary for you to retain as many items in your memory as possible. It's a very effective way of learning a lot of different items very quickly, a lot of information very quickly, and it's perfect for learning the vocabulary of a new language or for subjects uh, such as anatomy or biochemistry that contain a lot of factual data. All right. So how does image occlusion come into this? Well, it's pretty easy to use Anki if you're just processing textual information. To add a flashcard, you simply think of a question like this one. Then you think of an answer and add the card and there you go. That's the only three steps you have to perform to create a simple flashcard if it's just about textual information. Now this becomes much more difficult if we're dealing with images and visual subjects. Let's take this image of the limbic lobe as an example. So if you look at this image there are six different items which you would have to retain in your memory. Six different labels which you would somehow have to convert into flashcards for Anki. The way, the way you would do this manually without image occlusion is the following. You would first use a editing software um, editing app like uh, Photoshop of Paint or Paint to occlude or to hide each of these labels. Then you would use the same software to put in a designator for each label, for instance 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so that you can actually refer to each label in your cards. If you've done this correctly it will look something, something like this. Uh, this took me about two or three minutes to process in uh, Photoshop. If you were to do the same thing for an image with more labels might take you up to 10 minutes to create just one image like this and depending on how good you are in the app it might take you even longer but this is just the first step you will, would have to perform in order to add an image manually into Anki the next thing you would then have to do is to create your cards you would import the image um, then you would phrase or find a question for each image for instance here um, what is depicted at number one and then you would have to enter the answer and of course you would have to repeat the step for each of the six labels found on this image and if it's an image with 10 or 20 labels the time necessary to create this would scale proportionally now this is a lot of time that doesn't really go into memorizing the content you want to actually study so it's a lot of very tedious effort that doesn't really help you learn the subject at hand. Now let's repeat the same procedure with image occlusion. Again we're going to head into Anki's editor but in this case we're going to hit the image occlusion button. Choose the same image and this is where the, uh, the uh, magic happens. So we use these rectangle shapes which we call occlusion shapes to cover up each label. Do this quickly for each of the six and then we just hit one button and that's it. That's all we have to do. Now we've got six notes, perfect notes, that are ideal for studying the labels on this image. What would have taken us about at least four or five minutes to do with the uh, manual method took us all about 20 seconds with image occlusion. That's where the power of the add-on lies. And another small advantage of course is that with image occlusion you have the information both the question and the answer right where you would expect it. Your eye is guided, your eyes are guided directly to the question. So it's very easy and very intuitive way uh, of processing this information. Okay, so that's what image occlusion is about. 
Now, the videos that follow will be about image occlusion enhanced specifically. And to give you a quick overview of the history of the add-on, I have to go to the Anki add-ons overview. And as you can see, this add-on page here is for Image Occlusion 2.0. Now this is the original version of the add-on, which was created by Tiago Barroso. Uh, I'd like to use this opportunity to thank Tiago for creating Image Occlusion. It was a tremendous help in my own studies, and I'm sure this add-on has helped a lot of people pass through anatomy or other medical subjects, and of course other subjects in general. So thanks a lot for creating and coming up with Image Occlusion, Tiago. It's really appreciated. All right, so Image Occlusion Enhanced is based on this version of Image Occlusion, and it differs in a number of ways, which I'm going to try to give you a quick summary here. For this, uh, I've prepared a uh, screenshot of the old version of the Image Occlusion add-on. So let's compare, th compare this to the editor, which is available in Image Occlusion Enhanced. So, the main, differences, uh, the main differences lie in the user interface. With Image Occlusion 2.0, you had one screen where you, where, where you had the header on top, the Image Occlusion editor in the middle, the footer field below it, and then a tag and deck selection area. With Image Occlusion Enhanced, you now have two tabs. One for the masks editor, which gives it enough space so that you can process larger images, and another tab for additional fields, which are the header and footer, and two new fields which are called remarks and sources that only appear on the back of the card and offer a good way of adding a lot of additional information to image occlusion cards. So the mask editor is the same as with image occlusion enhanced, I'm sorry, with image occlusion 2.0. The general way of adding cards is also has also stayed the same, so if you're coming from Im image occlusion 2.0 you will feel right at home, but there have been a number of a large number actually of smaller improvements and bug fixes that should make the experience much more pleasurable for you. It would probably take way too long to list all of the changes, for instance the fact that you can now resize the editor, the fact that you can now easily fit the image to the canvas just by clicking one button, and a lot of new shortcuts etc. So instead of listing all of these I'm going to um, have to guide you to the official change log, which contains all of these changes in great detail. So if you've used Image Occlusion 2.0 before, I'd recommend you carefully read through this so that you get an idea of what exactly changed for you. Alright, so that's it for the introduction to Image Occlusion Enhanced. I hope this served as a good overview and that you now have a good basic understanding of what Image Occlusion is and how it can help you. The next videos, as I've said, will cover the installation, the use and the customization of the add-on. Until then, thanks for watching, I wish you good luck in your studies and I hope to see you soon. Bye!